Hi, I'm Rain Wilson, and this is my story of how I try to make the world a better place. My career has been a long road. It was, I was a professional actor for like, was it 14 years before I landed the office? And for nine of those years, I didn't do any TV or film. I only did theater. So for me, it was like, my career was just like this endless, like climbing up this mountain, you know, just one handhold at a time. Really a lot of hard work. Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. Great. Yeah. Did you go to school up there? I did. I was born and raised. Olympia for a while, the north of Seattle for a while, a little town called Lake Forest Park. There at UW, taking acting. I was having success in like college acting. I thought, maybe I can turn pro. And so I started auditioning around Seattle as if that's turning pro. Striking out everywhere and realizing swiftly like, oh shit. I've got a lot of learning to do and a lot of work to do if I want to be considered anything close to like a professional actor. So I did tons of Shakespeare, I did tours, I did comedies, I did off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, Broadway, regional theaters, and experimental theater, created theater. It, it was a great fertile ground as, a, as an actor. And immediately I started having more success in LA than I did in New York. And I got two movie roles and a pilot right off the bat. I was in Galaxy Quest and Almost Famous. So then it was several years 2000, 2001, 2002, of slogging around, doing a lot of guest spots. I was in CSI and right. Law and Order. Like, and, like random scenes? Yeah, little little, little spots here and there, little tiny roles. And, and then I did this show called uh, Six Feet Under. I had a nice, memorable character there, and that kind of like set the scene and teed me up to do The Office. No, I want it, I'm going to use it. You don't even drink tea. True, but I get sinus infections. And sinus infections can be cured by making a tea from green tea leaf stems okay. and pouring it directly into your nose, like so. You know, it changed my life in every conceivable way, but at the time we didn't know that because the show was almost canceled, like a dozen different times. And then all of a sudden, halfway through season two, then, then we were off and running. All of a sudden we were ticking up the Nielsen viewer ratings. More and more young, we found younger audiences were really digging the office. And then I knew my life was gonna be was never gonna be the same. I think the main thing for me that came out of um, my acting journey was I got to create this company, Soul Pancake. Well, well, well. Welcome to my talk show. <laughs> As I was getting well known for The Office, I kind of saw a need on the internet for something positive. So I talked to a bunch of friends of mine, friends of mine, and we kind of came up with the, the seed concept of Soul Pancake, of a place to chew on life's big questions, to dig into philosophy, spirituality, what it means to be a human being. And that's been amazing because really my celebrity from the office allowed me to launch that right. thing. And now it's off and running without me and all uplifting, inspiring, challenging human content about the human experience. So I feel like, oh, okay, yes, I got to do Dwight, but I also got to make this positive impact right. in the world. Be all right if I called you Greta Thunderberg. When did you become a Baha'i? Well, basically I grew up a member of the Baha'i faith. My parents were Baha'is. They became Baha'is in the, in the 60s and it was kind of pre-hippie days, but during the hippie days, in the late 60s, early 70s, people were searching for spirituality. They were searching for meaning sure. outside of the traditional places where you used to find meaning. It used to be like the church on the corner and government and a good job, nine to five, and that gave you the meaning. And then the, the Vietnam War and the right. civil unrest. And uh, so here is a religion that's tackling the issue of the era and people were looking for spiritual answers. The Beatles went and met with the Maharishi and Cat Stevens became a Muslim. Like people yep. were searching. Right. And in that milieu, my parents and a lot of my relatives became members of the Baha'i faith. A lot of people became Baha'is during that time. 
When I moved to New York City, 20, to go to acting school, I needed to rebel, you know? I needed to just cast away the religion of my parents. I needed to not have any morality in my life. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. Went through a several year process of reading spiritual books, holy texts of other religions, and learning about them, and really kind of like slowly started coming back to religion. The main question for me was like, is there a God, you know? Because if there is a God, it's a very different world than if there is not a God. Right. And all my friends that I would ask would kind of believe in God, but they were kind of playing it both ways. But, but I couldn't play that middle ground. I was like, if there's a God, then what does this God want for us? And then that's when the Baha'i way of seeing the world all of a sudden clicked into place. Like, oh yeah, so this, this God sends divine teachers down every 500 or 1,000 years or so to uh, help humanity progress spiritually and move forward. And, and then that kind of brought me back to the writings of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, who did a lot of reading and studying and praying and meditating. And around the same time I moved to LA, it was around 99 or so, mm -hmm. uh, that's when I came back into the Baha'i faith. To be a Baha'i is to be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim. Um, a lot of people are like, kind of like, oh, I'm a Christian and I'm a Baha'i because Baha'is believe in Jesus. Baha'is believe in the Torah and the divinity of Abraham and Moses and Baha'is believe in the divinity of Muhammad as well. So to practice being a Baha'i, it's really pretty simple. We read some writings in the morning and the evening. We say a prayer uh, between noon and sunset. I bear witness, oh my God, that thou hast created me to know thee and to worship thee. I testify at this moment to my powerlessness, to thy might, to my poverty, and to thy wealth, that there is none other God but thee, the help in peril, the self subsisting. That's it. All the issues that humanity is dealing with, Baha'u'llah wrote about and offers spiritual solutions to those problems. The Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, these are some of these divine teachers. They're essentially teaching one religion. So there's one God, one religion that is gradually unfolding. And Baha'u'llah is the most recent of these divine teachers. And his, his teachings are totally relevant to what's going on in the world today. A Baha'i tries to bring about unity. Um, we're all one human family inhabiting this planet and everything is about working together, consulting together, and building something beautiful together. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. And it, it's interesting, because being in my 50s now, I've got a teenage son, like I have kind of a different perspective, and it's, it's interesting, it's like I don't have that drive and that fire to like start another company. It's so <laughs> hard, it's so much work, and it's, it really takes it out of me. I always loved acting, sure. but I'm loving more and more of the writing and the other aspects. So sure. I'm writing a book on spirituality right now, and spiritual ideas and thoughts, um, I'm writing a, a horror screenplay. I want to do more more directing. Um, awesome. So uh, I'm really excited about that. And um, I, so I think it's it's kind of a little bit of acting, a little bit of writing, a little bit of directing, staying creative. And my wife and I have a nonprofit down in Haiti called Lide Haiti that um, does education for adolescent girls. And I want to keep up in the philanthropy world as well and raising awareness about climate change issues, around racial injustice issues, and uh, education. These are some of the uh, things I want to pursue. If there's one message that you could say to people from every country watching this, what would you say? I would say that whatever your personal issue might be, if it's like making money or trying to get an education, if you're suffering from anxiety or depression, uh, you have family issues, addiction issues, that the answer to pretty much any personal quandary or struggle that you have is service. Service to others. Service to others heals, brings people together, it makes you happy, it gives you increased self-esteem, it opens doors, it creates kind of that good, positive, spiritual energy and karma in the universe, and we have to shift our whole way of being in the world towards service to others. Anyone in the world has got to do what they can to try and make the world sure. a better place, not just in the media. You can be an accountant, you can be a dental assistant, a, a school teacher, a gardener, no matter what your profession, what can you do to 
not just make money to provide for your family, that's important and have a nice life and be comfortable, sure, that's good too, but to leave the world better than when you found it. So I'm just now getting home after spending an hour with Rain at his house. He gave me an hour of his time and he was just so kind and humble. And I just want to make this note right now to let you know that I was a little bit nervous to meet him, but I shouldn't have been because he's just a normal person like me and you. And yeah, he's such a superstar and he's so famous, but he's just a cool guy and sit down and we could chat for hours and hours. And, and that's kind of the point of what I wanted to make this video for is for him to be an inspiration for all of you guys that you can capitalize on, on your dreams and you can follow through and you can do it. And if Rain did it and he's just a normal person, then I don't know why you can't do it too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video as usual and I'll catch you later. I'm Drew Binsky and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more inspiring people stories from every country. And I also have another YouTube channel, my main channel, where I go on the most epic adventures in faraway places. Also, if you wanna become a better traveler and save money, I'm offering the first chapter of my travel hacking course for free. Just click that link down below in the middle. Until next time guys, stay safe, be spontaneous, and just go.